Hey everyone, it's Amy here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a love it or leave it review and wear test on a new foundation from Natasha Denona. It's been starting to trickle in at Sephora and they just released a bunch of new products including this brand new foundation. So I had to scoop it up and try it out for you guys. So we are going to be first talking about the product then I will be doing a live demo for you guys and kind of talking through it, giving you guys my thoughts and then I will be doing a wear test throughout the day. So here is what the foundation foundation packaging looks like it's really pretty it's a clouded glass container and you do get a total of 1.01 fluid ounces so basically a standard size and it retails for $45 which is on the higher end but I wouldn't consider it a high-end foundation like it's not as expensive as like Hourglass, Dior, Lancome that that kind of stuff her stuff is expensive for eyeshadows but the rest of her stuff isn't like too too bad so I'm kind of starting to trickle into trying more of her products but this will retail you for $45. It's a weird number, but there's 11 shades. I don't know how they picked 11. Totally random. I don't think it's the best shade range either. I have the lightest shade, which is color number 10, which is neutral fair, suitable for all undertones. Basically, for the most part, the rest of the shades have kind of yellow, red, or orange. I'm not even kidding. They say red and orange undertone. And there's none that have like a rosy or pink undertone. So keep that in mind too. If you pull a very cool pink undertone, there's not a whole lot in here for you. On the other end of the spectrum, there's really not a whole lot for deep skin tones, unfortunately. There's a shade number 70, which is medium dark. There's a shade number 75, which is dark with a yellow olive undertone. And then there's a shade number 90, which is a dark orange yellow undertone. So not a whole lot looking at this for the far end of the spectrum. I mean, the shade range in general seems very odd. It says it's full coverage. It's for sensitive, normal, dry combination, oily skin. It's a long-lasting, full coverage, radiant foundation that doesn't set into fine lines and leaves the skin with a natural, radiant, flawless finish. Foundation X Full Coverage Fruit Complex never looks thick, dry, or cakey. It's infused with special ingredients that help balance the T-zone area and absorb excess oils. Formulated to support anti-aging and its purification properties help defend against pollution. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the demo. I will be sharing with you guys what it looks like as I apply it on my face and we will kind of talk about each of the claims that it makes. So again, I'm in the shade 10, which is neutral fair. There's not a whole lot of shades in this at all and there's pretty much only one fair shade and then it jumps to light already. So not the best shade range. I'm just going to put a little bit on my hand and then I'm going to take a beauty blender. This is my Morphe sponge. So I'm just going to kind of bounce this on my face. And it does have a neutral undertone, it says, but I will say even in the packaging, as well as when I've been wearing it, it kind of slightly, like ever so slightly, leans a little yellow. So if you're really, really um, rosy and have a really cool pink undertone, there definitely is not a fair shade for that. Like I said, it just jumped right to um, light. And I find that her whole collection definitely leans warm. There were some that even have an orange undertone. That's literally what it said, orange and red. And I was like, what? So that's kind of interesting. So let's see how it's going. It does look really nice. At first when I'm blending it, it blends out really easily. It is a little bit on the thicker side. It's not definitely not runny or anything like that. I mean, you can see right there, it's not going anywhere. So let's see how well it covers up though. It does say it's full coverage because I got some good old acne that broke out this week from using I think an old foundation that must just be like expired. I was using my Stila Aqua Glow foundation and it broke me out within hours and that had never happened before but I hadn't used it in a really long time so I don't know if it just you know went bad or what but yeah I got some little friends now because of that. Um, it's covering it up a little bit, but it's not covering it up as much as I would expect for full coverage, but it does say you can build things up in small areas, so we will do that afterward. But again, I have a little acne right there that we're going to see, a little blemish, if that covers it up. I think it does cover it up pretty well. I mean, I can still see where it's at, but it definitely takes away the redness. It does say that one of its claims is that it never gets cakey, but I find, like, looking at it right now, like, it does look a little bit cakey. It's clinging on to any kind of, like, whiteheads I had or just any little bit of hairs or anything like that. So I do find that it looks a tad, just like a tad heavy. So it's interesting that it makes that claim. So I have just a little bit left. 
And we're going to see if we can kind of spot conceal with this. It looks like it works a little bit, but I still see those blemishes coming through a little bit. So I don't know if it's as full coverage as it claims. Because I feel like I can still, you know, I can still see like this spot right here and never completely covered it up. All right, now I'm zoomed up close on my forehead and you can see like right here, it seems to be like a little bit cakey or like clinging to dry spots I didn't think I even had. It just kind of looks like it sits on top of the skin a little bit. Like I said, that's not completely covered up and it does look like a little dry. So I definitely think if anything, this foundation's on the drier side. I think if you have super dry skin, this might not be the best foundation because I have combination oily skin and I find that this is making me look a little dry. You can still see some of my redness right here peeking through. It didn't cover up absolutely everything. And then here's what it looks like on my chin and around the nose area. Like you can see right here on my chin, I just feel like it clings a little bit to dryness and that, you know, it does look a little bit cakey right there. So here's what it looks like from here. You guys just saw super duper up close, but I'm going to go ahead and put on the rest of my makeup and then we will check the time and start the wear test. All right, so now I have the rest of my makeup on. I will leave the information down below what I'm wearing. I was actually just filming a Wet n Wild review slash tutorial using the new product, so that's what's on my face but I'm gonna show you guys up close what this looks like again because I do think it looks a little bit better once you actually have powder to set it but I still think that it kind of sits on top of your face and kind of clings to dry spots so here's what the chin looks like so for it claiming it's a non cakey foundation I do think like when you're really really up close that it does look a little bit cakey and it definitely emphasizes dry spots but once you put all your makeup together and everything and you're like a normal distance from everyone it doesn't look that bad but right off the bat I don't think it looks as amazing on the face as most foundations do so at this point let's see it is now it is now 11.42. I put on the rest of my makeup at 10.45. Like I said, I was filming another video, so it's already been on for about an hour at this point. So I'm going to film a couple more videos and then probably do another check-in, maybe in some natural light. And then I'm going to go run errands and then we'll do the final check-in later today. So I will see you guys in a couple hours. Hey you guys, I am back to do the final check-in with you guys and give you guys my final thoughts on the new Natasha Denona Foundation X Full Coverage Foundation. It is now 8.39 if you guys can see. So it has been on for almost exactly 10 hours. And I have to say, it actually looks pretty good for 10 hours. I've actually had... All my makeup on for 10 hours. I have all Wet n Wild products on my eyes and my highlight. Now I have been laying down so the highlight's not as good but I mean these eyeshadows have been on for 10 hours with no primer so A plus on that. But as far as the foundation goes I actually think this wears better throughout the day. Um, that it actually finally looks good on my skin now at 10 plus hours and the reason I'm saying that is because if you guys saw in the demo and the check-ins like I found that it made my skin look dry and almost a little bit more aged like I didn't like how it made spots that normally are not dry for me kind of dry looking and a little bit cakey and that was on my chin and on my forehead especially you could see like right here on this little spot it was clinging but as the day went on and I got a little bit oilier coming through then it finally made everything look a little bit more natural looking and a little bit more skin like and so at this point like I said it's been 10 hours I have combination oily skin there's no shine I'm not oily like when I get up close because of the lights I did turn my ring light off you will see it looks like I'm getting shiny but I'm really not like I have my little mirror right here like there's no shine going on my face so it held up really really well throughout the day so let me show you guys up close and then I will kind of wrap up my final thoughts on this product and who I think it's meant for so here's up close on my skin. You can see still it looks a little bit more dry up close and it just looks like a little bit dry around the nose. It did wear off a little bit on my nose, not surprising. Again, it looks like a little bit shiny around, you know, the apples in my cheeks and the pore area, but it's really not. It's just the lights. And then here's my forehead. Again, I feel like you can see a little bit that it still looks a little bit dry, especially around that blemish. So I feel like this foundation is actually going to be really great for people that have combination or oily skin. Maybe normal, but I don't know. I feel like normal and dry skin, it may be actually too drying for you guys because I have combination skin. And like I said, spots where I'm normally not dry, like my chin and forehead, it made those areas look drier. 
So that was a little odd. So I just think if you have normal dry skin and maybe too drying, you're going to really have to start using certain sprays or certain primers and stuff like that. Overall, I think it is living up to the expectation that it's medium to full coverage and it's long lasting. It says it's a radiant finish. I don't think this is a radiant foundation whatsoever. You guys could see in the demo before I put a setting powder on. I didn't find that it was radiant then either, so I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I don't think it's the most full coverage foundation ever either. I think it's buildable to a decent full coverage, but it's not the most full coverage I've ever used in my life. The cons are definitely the shade range. Like you guys, this is the most weird, bizarre shade range ever. There's only one shade in fair and it's a neutral undertone. Everything after that is light olive red orange. Like I've never seen things called orange undertones. You know I would not be about that, but I know it's necessary from some skin tones, especially as you get darker, but it was weird to see like for the lighter or light to medium skin tones have some like orange undertones. I don't know. I just think there's only 11 shades with some funky undertones. There's not a whole lot on either end of the spectrum, especially I don't think there's a lot for the deeper skin tones. It's a weird shade range. I think people are going to have a hard time choosing them, especially if this number hits the stores and it's only online. I do think that's going to be tough. So if you do purchase it, make sure you can purchase it somewhere where they accept returns in case you do not get a perfect color match the first time around. Also, the biggest con is I do think it looks drying on the skin. I just didn't like how at first it made my skin look a little bit more aged and a little bit drier and a little bit like crusty down here around my nose right here and on my forehead, especially if you have blemishes or if you're using an acne treatment. I think it's going to kind of cling to those areas you're treating. So I do think that this foundation may be a little bit more high maintenance. I don't like for $45 that I'm going to have to use another product because there's plenty of other foundations out there for around that same price that I think... I don't have to add anything to it and it's excellent or there's plenty of drugstore options that are great so when I find a new foundation I like to use it without primers that way I can test it because I truly believe it should for $45 be awesome on its own and I shouldn't have to use another primer it's one thing if I want to to enhance it or to make it better but I shouldn't have to and I feel like with this one I'm gonna have to use some kind of hydrating primer and that's not usually the case for me because I just don't like how it looks on the skin right away and I don't want to have to wait eight hours for it to finally look natural on my skin if that makes sense so overall I'm not super impressed by this it's actually really long wearing that's the only thing I'm super impressed with is how long wearing this looks and how good it looks for after 10 hours I just think it's okay it's not the worst foundation in the world but it's definitely not a love it there's plenty of other foundations I love better I hope you guys enjoyed the review the demos and the check-ins throughout the day seeing how this wore for 10 hours if you did give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe so you can stay tuned to all my upcoming videos and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!